this is Harry Jumper Boxing Social in partnership with Empire Fight Store. Um, I am joined by Jordan Barker Paul. So you would expect us to go on about boxing, about last performances, what's next in 2023. But I think we're going to just do this conversation on you and your performance in SES Who's There's Wins. The first episode was out last night. Um, yeah, um, it was bizarre to, to, to see you in there. I saw the news when you were going in and you announced it weeks before, but the um, the first episode has finally dropped. We won't go on about what goes on throughout the series because we can only talk about what happened last night, but um, they certainly put you in the deep end straight away, Jordan. Like... Yeah, that's probably to put it politely, if I'm honest. Like in the episode that was aired last night, like it, it's three days worth of footage, which you filmed 24 hours a day, and that was condensed into 47 minutes. So, like watching it back last night, there was so much missed off what we actually did, the the beasts that we went through. I mean, that first 24 hours when we got landed in the jungle, um, was absolutely insane. I mean, I think it was about three o'clock in the morning we had to get up. Um, so this was all part of the process, like a really early wake up call. And then I think it was about 1am maybe they let us go to bed the following day. So like we were so sleep deprived, like our first 24 hours was absolutely brutal. But like that didn't kind of come across in the episode. Um, but yeah. How how really? Because what what we see is that you're you're living in camp. Um, yeah, like you mentioned, the sleep deprivation that you go through, the beast thing which you go through, which we we will go on about. Because what happened in the first episode, but how real is it from what we see on the telly? It's what you actually go through. Um, it you don't even come close to what we go through. If I'm honest, if it's based on that first episode, and to be fair, even me being a viewer at home prior to going in and doing it myself, you'd think. Sometimes, yeah, it looks like certain things look hard, but like I've sat there at home, I'll admit and say, think, oh, I, I, I could do that. That looks, that looks all right. Do you know what I mean? You get in there and it's totally different gravy, like completely different gravy. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference how fit you are, how strong you are. It's whether you've got it up here. Um, so yeah, it it's cut out a lot of the the mental pain, and like torture kind of what you we were we went through them them first couple of days because a lot of the beastings weren't shown on there yeah i mean yeah we will go on about the like i said the beasting and things and yeah you, you are a boxer you are fit you know probably more fitter than the other candidates that are in there at the moment did you feel um especially what we saw in the first episode did you feel like you were fitter than a lot of the others in there or you know did you not feel as fit you know how did you really feel Nah, to be honest, like middle of the pack, I would say there's people in there like straight away that were a hundred percent like fitter and stronger than me. Um and the the producers even that said themselves it's the, the best calibre of candidates that they've had so far. Um so I knew even just looking around when you can see everyone's got that like athletic build, like everyone's got like a certain background or kind of sport that they're into, or they just love the gym. Um so yeah. Some challenges I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm like a little bit ahead of the game. And then there was others where like, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm actually struggling with this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, this year is different because they've done it in, in all manner of different circumstances, all manner of different terrains. But this year it's in Vietnam, in the jungle. Um, we see you obviously living together, eating together, washing together. And a lot of the times what was shown last night on the toilet together, um, how disgusting is the camp when you're in there? Vile, like the toilet side of it and the shower side of it, absolutely disgusting. Like that was a big struggle for me because I'm like, I am a very like, I'd like to class myself as a very clean person. <laughs> I like my own space when I'm going for shit, shall we say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the reality of it. Like I like, a nice it's the little things that you take for granted like a flushing toilet your own yeah. privacy going to the toilet a nice warm shower um and a nice powerful one as well that like was next level you could pretty much see what someone's had for breakfast whilst you're doing your business do you know what i mean it was just it was just crazy absolutely crazy 
Um, in terms of food as well, what type of what food do you get? Because we see the containers, but we don't actually see what you're eating. Um, to be honest, plain white rice was on the menu every single day. Um, no seasoning, no salt. Um, very chewy, should I say? Um, on a morning you'd get like a, a dry boiled egg. Um. <sighs> Some of the evening meals were slightly better, mm. um, but a lot of it was every single day, plain white rice, plain white rice. Like, I, when I come out, I, I genuinely didn't want to look at rice for, like, a long period of time, um, and that was something I usually lo- loved to have, was, like, my carb. Mm. Honestly, it was just mental. Like, I expected, to be honest, watching, like, the previous um seasons like they had they had oats for breakfast and I thought oh we had I kind of just expect oh yeah you'll get some like oh no no none of that we didn't get oats one day so I was like oh, <laughs> every oats the first challenge um was uh, a risk of heights a fear of heights let's say it was a a, a, a amalgamation of of you know the, your balance work your footwork um I, I think everyone failed the first task um and like I said to you off camera, and, and you, again, this could have been edited this way, but um, one of the, I think it was Billy, who was at the top, sort of instructing everyone or, or saying instructing, a lot of the times hounding people in terms of their technique. Um, but I think when you went down eventually, he said the word pathetic. That was the adjective <laughs> you got used. I, I don't, I can't remember that exact word being used to me but be honest my brain was probably frazzled by this point so it might have been but I don't know whether that was just edited to look like it was for when I fought, fell because what they didn't actually show is when I did fall I literally my chin landed on the pole um, and I genuinely thought it was like what I can only imagine a Canelo and Tyson Fury punch to feel like um, so he actually asked us like are you alright first and then I was like fail I'm like okay no problem. But uh, there was a couple of them that actually did um, successfully get across. But yeah. out of 20 of us, I think it was about five or six. Which instructor is the worst to deal with in terms of... Because, you know, they've, they, in there, they've got a responsibility. They're trying to get in your head, aren't they? They're not actually being mean to, to be mean for the sake of it. They're doing it to be productive. Which instructor are, were you most intimidated by? Billy, 100%. Go on, why? 100%. It was just there was no, no filter, no motion. Like there was just you, you get it done and you get it done in the way that I'm asking you to do it, or you're a fuck up. That's kind of, do you know what I mean? You failed. You, you pathetic as the 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 one before was. Um, there was just no bullshit with him. Like whereas Foxy, there's a little bit of like dark humor there. He'd like have a little bit of one liners, things like that. Um, and Billy would sometimes as well, but. He was he was brutal, but in in the best way to get the best out of you, if mm. that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely, Billy. Do you think? Yeah, this is an obvious question, but do you think you're you're yeah you know, you're a boxer of Christ, like professional boxer? Yeah, you you are mentally strong. You're you're combat. Yeah, you know, you're in a combat situation. You know, as your as your day job. How much do you think that's been a benefit, or has it been a benefit at all, or is it a completely different skill set? Um, it's it it did a made us learn a lot about myself, um, and also realize that I'm I'm the type of person that I can kind of go to the gym and I can motivate myself. I don't need someone to be there twenty four seven to shove a rocket up my ass. Like I can do that myself. Um, but it, what it made us realize is during the sessions. So even if I am doing them sessions by me, like a session by myself, I know that when I think I've actually only got all right, like when I think I'm done. I'm I'm not done. There is actually so much more left in the tank where you can push. That's that was a big wake up call. Um a big learning, should I say. But I think the issue for me is when I come out, I didn't have any downtime. I was straight back in a boxing camp and that's where I fucked up. That's where I fucked up massively because I absolutely crashed and burned mm-hmm. and didn't allow me didn't allow me mind to even switch off or like just process what I've just put my body and mind through. Um, so at the time I, I didn't really feel the benefits straight away if I'm honest because I didn't have that breathing space um, 
I feel the benefits now. I've had rest time. I had like a three week period off where I just kind of took myself away from from boxing in general and allowed everything to kind of reset and recover. And yeah. um, so I feel like I've gone back to the gym a much happier person. Um, but yeah, it's one what, of them. One of the main, um, I guess, mentally torments, other than the, the one suspecting they would do in the last episode is the the isolation part of it the bee sting um is just that's one of their main focuses one of the me- members of the team like uh last night um didn't the members of their team didn't have their water bottle filled up to a certain certain limit which meant the whole team was beasted how brutal are those bee sting and how brutal was it last night if you can recall of a member what it was like like the picking up of each other, carrying each other, um, and and all the rest of it. I mean that particular beast in where we were um fire, doing the fireman carry and the chucking them like actual uh, uh, carrying each other on the front of us, um, that was insane. Like in the membrane, like I, like I say, I, do, I I train intensely as it is, but like it doesn't matter what training you do, that nothing prepares you for that, mm. and that didn't even show that full beast and so like those walks that we were doing back and forth like that wasn't it we were then running around a part of the jungle then they were making us jump in the water swim round go again repeat it repeat it repeat it then mm. the lines that where we were carrying each other back and forward we were having a bear crawl back and forward they didn't show that bit we're doing burpees squat jumps it was continuous for no word of light it must have been about an hour and i think the purpose of that was for someone to quit the one obviously the, the purpose is to kind of break people so people given the armband Mm. Um, and then as soon as someone kind of did give in the armband, that's when that particular beast in like slowed down a little bit. But yeah, go on. <laughs> How much in terms of last night's episode were you tempted to give it in last night? Uh, oh, not not at all. Didn't no? even think about one. I mean, don't get us wrong. There was times where it's like like even on them three years where I thought, what the fuck. <laughs> but every single morning and every single night and even during the challenges, I all I any negative energy or any negative thoughts I was having, I try to just switch it to a positive thing straight away. Mm. You've got this, you've only got this amount of days left. Come on, you can do this. Think of the benefits. Like that's all I kept telling myself over and over again. So I was just trying to switch a negative to a positive. So for me, the the one thing when I went in is I said I'm 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 not a quitter. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, one of the things as well, you, you obviously be able to describe us a little bit more. It seems like a really good team, especially last night as well. You see your sort of, I say, down times whenever you get a chance to sort of relax and sit down. Yeah, is it was it a good team to to be around? Yeah, definitely. Like everyone picked each other up. Like if someone was struggling, the, the rest of the gang would be there. And um, so it was a really good mix of people. Um, and it 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 was nice. Obviously, some people got on better. The, with others um but just everyone kind of come together it was it was a I would like to say a nice environment up there but you still had the the stress and the torture of what's coming next so but yeah everyone uh, kept each other sane I'd like to say it's a beautiful part of the world though Vietnam um and a place like that I mean the the rafting that was done later on in that episode last night um I don't I can't remember if we were we don't think we saw you your part of that trial wasn't shown. How did you deal with that aspect, sort of the rafting and those sort of military drills? Is that the, the one where we did the abseiling down yeah, the abseiling. waterfall? Rafting, yeah, abseiling. yes, abseiling. Yeah, um, yeah. that was absolutely brutal. And even I, I was saying to Amy, because we watched it together last night, and um, I said that they didn't even show part of the beast and going up to the waterfall because that was some trek, like brutal. They had us doing sprints continuously mm. like against the loser then if you lose you've got to sprint again like it was you were in twos constantly boom 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 up and down a hill like it was absolutely torture so like when we got at the top I've never sensed a bigger relief in my whole entire life and then it was to the point where they were showing you one of the lads was projectile vomiting one of the lasses was nearly passing out like that's how severe it was and that's how hot it was that day as well um but when you got to the top and you knew, right, this is it, I'm going to be abseiling down this, it was like, fuck. Like, I was nervous at the same time, though, because I never actually thought that I had a fear of heights until I went on this. And, I mean, it's not just, like, at home where you're in, like, 
be a bit high on something, think, oh, it's all right. Like, this is where you've actually got to go fucking down on something, on a bit of equipment you've never used before in your life. Mm. So I was, like, panicking. My palms were sweaty. Um, and to be honest, I think you'll have seen where one of the lads gets caught in a part of the waterfall, which is the most dangerous part of it. They explained it here. That if you get caught in there, like, you can drown. You can't get yourself yeah. out. I got caught in that, and I actually thought I was going to drown and die. Um, and that's not me being dramatic. That is me being like fucking truthful um but luckily managed to get myself out <laughs> it got me at the bottom i know thank fuck here we are <laughs> but i genuinely thought this is it this is this is death by waterfall mm. um, death by waterfall. yeah but it so it wasn't one of my greatest challenges if i'm honest okay. but i got to the end i got to the end safely there was no injuries i did smash into the one of the rocks so i did have a slight bump on my thigh, but other than that, it was it was all good. I got to the end. You mentioned your partner there as well. How much of a discussion was it before you went in? You know, I'm thinking about doing this. What did you think? How did that the conversation go? Well, to be honest, she she already kind of knew because I'd went to apply for the season before. Okay. Um. Now I got it, it, the application is so in depth and like lengthy. You've really got to take your time with it. Like if you want to do it properly, um to like get your kind of character across across yeah. sorry and I'd got to the end and it timed out but I hadn't saved so I thought wow like I've spent all these hours for like nothing so I thought right it's just not great timing I'm a true believer in like timing and everything happens for a reason so I waited until like last year and I thought right I'm in a really good headspace now like positive vibes blah 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 I feel good yeah. mentally and physically so let's go for it um so she helped us with the application as well because she's absolutely unbelievable words where that's not my strong point. Um, yeah. And yeah, that took us over three days to do the application. Um, got it in and I got a phone call within 24 hours. So I thought, oh, this is uh, <laughs> this is quite promising. <laughs> um, so it was quite a lengthy process though. This was like over a good few months, different interviews, back and forth, fitness tests. So it was quite a lengthy process to get through just, before you actually got the nod to say, right, you, you, you're on, you're a recruit. Um, so she went through it all. Did you try and get any advice? I don't know if you know anyone, you know, the military you know, personnel or anyone anyone you could get advice from? Or how did you train your, change your training for it? Did you try and do, uh, do a tough model or what did you do to sort of prepare? Uh, well, one of the rules is, you know, I like to reach out to anybody that's previously been on the show. Because okay. that would have kind of been my go to hello. Can you give us some info? But <laughs> I thought I'm not even going to risk it. Um, but Nick, um, my coach is ex army. Um, so he gave us a little bit of advice. But other than that, no, I kind of just cracked on, did me training as I was. And then they send you, um, once you kind of got the nod to say that you're in, um, because it's part of the application as well, you had to um, agree that you'd be free and keep the full of September, mm. like totally free. Um, but they just couldn't give you the exact dates until closer at the time. So um, so many weeks prior, they sent you a regime, a follow as well. Mm. Um, so it was just mixing it up. Like the, the boots that you sent you out, like start going out for runs with them, get your feet used to them, start wearing a little like backpack with a bit of weight on, start getting out for some runs. So you've got them Bergens to wear every single day. How, um, how and then are the Bergens? Well, in last night's episode, it's, said 15 kilograms but yeah. heavier than that because that was without yeah there had to be 15 kilograms without the water and food content and your trees like the little things that you eat the food in mm. um so by the time everything's in fully and you've got your full allowance of water filled up to the brim you're looking at when we weighed them between 20 and 25k wow and you'd have that like, on let's say how, how long a stint would you have it on for i suppose it ranges differently doesn't it yeah, so it depends, like, you're wearing it quite a lot of the day, on and off, on and off. Um, So that was, like, a big, I mean, when I'd never go out for a run with a bag on my back, so I had to, like, get a little bit of preparation in, even at the point when, like, we were out there in the hotel, because uh, we are isolated before going into the jungle. Mm. Um, they had, We got one hour of every 24 hours where we could go out for some exercise, um, so I was I was wearing my boots, I was wearing the bag, so I was just getting myself a bit like prepared for it. Um, but yeah, one thing that was I'd another struggle, one. One thing I'd struggle with, I mean, and you probably say the same, or well, you may do, but after a long day of say this 
excruciating training that you're doing. I just want to put my bag down and just slump. They are constantly surprising you and you have to have your equipment, clothes, everything in neat, tidy condition, everything packed the way it was done when you first got hold of it. How hard was it to, to maintain that level of of um, you know, discipline with your equipment and, and, and clothes and all the rest of it? I was all right with that, to be fair, because that's something like discipline's a big thing in my everyday um, schedule. So like that, I, d- I didn't really struggle with that, but it was to the point where like sometimes some people did forget to fill up the, the water bottle, which you keep on the on the front of you and clip in if that wasn't filled to the brim and they did a like, little um, check of everyone's and one wasn't filled, then everyone would get punished. So like yeah, sometimes if you quickly... I mean, when they shout you on the parade square, you've you've got five minutes. That's all you've got. If you're over that, you get beasted. If like so, sometimes when you're panicking, you haven't got your boots laced up. If you haven't got your top up properly, you're quickly trying to get ready. Sometimes you're like, shit, I forgot to fill my water bottle up. Mm. Um, but other than that, it was just a case of like, as soon as you come back in that room, you fill your stuff up straight away. You're ready to go if you get shouted again. So we got in a good routine. After a couple of days, everyone kind of got the head screwed on. Was like, right, this is how we need to do it um so yeah we saw a preview for next episode which airs on monday next week and there seems to be a boxing element in it i suppose that's home from home for you jordan isn't it let's i know but to be honest that, that was one of the ones i was most looking forward to um but obviously i'll not give too much away um but yeah you just you'll have to stay tuned for next week <laughs> Really looking forward to it. And also looking forward to it, you know, if you do get to the part where they do sit you down and, and talk about the reasons why you've been on the show, I think that would be, I think for everyone that fans of yours, including myself, would like to know a little bit more about, you know, your whole background and things. But um, let's quickly go on to, to boxing. Obviously, away from SES, who dares wins. We're back in camp or back training now. When are we likely to hear of a fight date? Um, So it's just been pushed back a week. So it's going to be the 7th of April. Um, I'm sure there was meant to be the the fight card announced this week, but we'll we'll soon find out. Um, so yeah, seventh of April local show, um, fight zone show. Mm. So yeah, just just nice and chill, plenty of time. Um, no need to rush anything. So that's kind of the mistake I made last year. And yeah, just keep my head screwed on, and we'll, we'll go again. One fight, one big win, and I'm back to where I was. Yeah. Um. So yeah, good vibes. Yeah, um, well, Jordan, thanks for speaking to me tonight. Um, I'm a massive fan of the show. I was absolutely surprised and delayed that you were on it, to be honest. I knew someone that was on the show as well. It's just amazing to watch, to be honest. So um, we look forward to, to Monday, um, next week, your appearance once again on Channel 4. And we also look forward to your next fight date, mate. But thanks so much for Boxing Social. No problem, man. That, that that one I did have to keep a secret to so that. That boxing camp where everyone thought I was on, it was actually SES. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Jordan.